Y254. Imagine. Good evening to you and thank you once again for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. Here we not only entertain you but we want to give you information that will impact your life and hopefully transform you into a better person. This evening I want to ask you, have you invested in your health and your wellness? Do you think there is a value in investing and taking care of your health and your wellness? And I want us to discuss this conversation in depth. And joining me is Monica Mushemi, the lovely nurse and a wellness consultant. Karibu, Monica. Thank you so much, Cheryl. You look lovely this evening. Thank you so much, yeah. even for having me in the Power Talk. Karibu sana. Yes. It's mm. lovely to host you as well. Thank you. And so. right next to Monica, we have Dr. Jared Odawa, who is a forensic psychiatrist. Yes, yes. Karibu, Dr. Asante sana. I'm really grateful for being invited for this uh, Power Talk show. Yes. Uh, let me just confess, your looks are bewitching, so we we'll survive <laughs> for the one now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. That's a great way to start the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so I want us to talk about the importance of investing <clears throat> in our health and our wellness. What is the value of you taking care of your health as early as now? So go to your social media platforms, Search for Y254 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I've made a post there, and you can write me your comment. If you have any question, you can ask that, and we will sample that as we progress with this show. You can also find me on my personal pages, which is at Cheryl Blessing. I hope you enjoy this show. And I think to kickstart the conversation, we should understand what is health and what is wellness. Mm. Monica, let's start with you. How would you define the two? Uh, Wellness, I would say uh, it is that aspect or the, the state of being spiritually, uh, emotionally, financially, physically fit. Actually, it is defined as having seven or eight dimensions that cuts across even being uh, well in the, in the mind. Yeah. And that's very in-depth. Yeah, yes. And so health, again, is the lack of, of you know, when you have, when you don't have a, an illness, then you are healthy. When you don't have, uh, you know, you don't have stress factors, then you say you, you are in good health. Nice. Mm -hmm. So the health focuses on the physical on aspect. The yes, yes, yes. And the wellness is more all round. Exactly. Jared, would yes. you share her opinion on that? I can only emphasize half points. He has actually explained health in, in the eight dimensions. It's more spiritual, it's phys physiological, psychological, mental. At the same time, it is our entire body and our entire spirit. That's how being healthy means. Mm -hmm. And uh, many factors contribute to our being well. Uh, our factors like our social, cultural orientation, mm -hmm. uh, our diet, uh, our lifestyle, they all influence our well-being. Uh, currently, because it's a talk show, we are not going to have a lecture here. Mm -hmm. You can see this culture of of uh, of, uh, of kuenda kwa base, the youth culture. They are chewing mira and so on and so forth. Mm. And you find somebody at 30 still has sexual dysfunctions, is using drugs to boost her, their sexual performance at 30. You know, that's basically unhealthy. But today, we're going to be real. We're going to address all issues pertaining to health, and we are going to be real to, to <coughs> our public. They are our audience. We are not offering a lecture. They will drive the conversation. Sure. We will attend to their issue, and I believe it could be a robust talk, and we're going to help our people, and that's why we are here. Thank you. Mm. And that's very well said. Mm. I like that. Because, mm. you know, we are here to help and educate our audience. Exactly. We want people to amend the habits mm. that they may think are healthy, mm. but are 
causing more harm to their bodies mm. than they're causing any uh, wellness to come about. Just so let me start with focus on um, health. Let us focus on health. Because mm -hmm. uh, Monica, I'm aware you do some supplements that boost the immune system yes, and our yes, health yes. overall. So can you talk to us about some things that you have noted that boost our health? Uh, maybe if, even before I talk about uh, uh, supplements, I'll first want to say that uh, being well, it is something that has to be self-driven. For you to be well, you have to be cognizant. It is your subconscious, you want to do it, you want to be very well. Mm. So you have to start with doing a wellness assessment as frequently as possible. You don't wait until you're sick so that you go to a hospital. You, need, you know, just like the way we maintain our cars, we take the car for service, just to make sure that it, is, it keeps running and it doesn't just stop one day. So having a wellness assessment done then it is very, very important for us. So, and we are saying that you have to start it as early as possible. You don't assume now that I'm not coughing, I don't have an abdominal pain, I don't have a headache, I'm okay. Until you, you go to the doctor, you just walk in and tell them, I want to do a complete wellness assessment. Then you're given a, a clean you know, bill of health yes. and you're told, good, you are, we you are, you are well. Again, if then you are not well, we start treating that as early as possible. Somebody said that the, fu the future doctor will not be giving medicine. They will be advising on diet mm. and, you know, lifestyle changes, not medicine anymore. It has to start now. Yes. Yeah. So before we talked about supplements, you know, supplements you're so going we to start yeah. on what you do before exactly. getting mm. that. Yes. So first you've mentioned mm. doing a wellness check. You exactly. have to do frequent mm. checkups. Yes. And these are things that people don't really do. If we're being honest and realistic, the youth will not go to hospital unless exactly. I feel a headache mm. and it's been bothering me. Mm. We also have to factor in the economic aspect. Sure. Like Jared mm. said, wellness encompasses everything, mm. the social, economic, mm. emotional. With the economy and the healthcare uh, prices and the costs, most people opt not to go to hospitals. So, Jared, how would you advise people, regardless of these factors that may influence them against going to get the checkup, how would you advise people to go about it? Uh, maybe I can make a joke. Uh, there is this joke we used to say that uh, I saw uh, our honorable president who wanted to introduce uh, the healthcare aids in our interiors. Eh? And we used to say that uh, uh, if men could do their job, we could be able to diagnose breast cancer if they could do their job well. <laughs> that was just a joke. Eh? And, uh, uh, but uh, people, I can't advise them to, 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 to go to, to the hospital on a daily basis to be able to be cured. They are their best doctor, number one. Mm. And our first objective is to educate them. Mm. It is to empower them. When they are empowered, we will have lesser workload on the health sector. Because believe me, they are bringing a lot of strains. The pharmaceutical industry in our country, we really export much. Mm. That's why when we are sick, it drains our economy. Our budget countrywide is just a very pers small percentage to, to the healthcare. And we can't advise them that uh, the way to go is to have unhealthy habits, unhealthy lifestyle for them to come to the hospital. We are here to empower them. Look at imagine, you see, uh, you see uh, somebody at 14, they are using, they are using, they are using uh, pills to regulate their pregnancy at 14, 15, 16. And you hear somebody has uh, infertility issue at 22. That is a, a burden on health that could be avoided if they could be educated, empowered on time. And that's why we are here to empower the public. Uh, we are not here to commercialize on their mm. diseases. Yes. And that's why he's not trying to tell them about the supplement mm. before he empowers mm. them. Mm. And that's why you want to have a very thorough conversation on how should they live healthy. And from there, we can talk. Mm. So it, there's some of the, mostly it's the habits. The, the, hab habits. the habits that we do, the things that we take in are what affect us in future. So this goes very well, hand in hand with the diet. Sure, sure. So what is the value of maintaining a healthy diet? We know right now we have so many uh, junk food places. We have Glovo, Uber Eats. They will <laughs> deliver to your doorstep. <laughs> and people order. You have discount codes and whatnot. 
Monica, what would you tell the youth who are in university or they're just starting out their lives and they prefer not to cook or eat healthier options? Even kids who are younger, we take children out and they just eat pizzas and chicken. What would you advise the parents and the, the people who do these habits? Uh, and this is more to, to what we are eating, yeah? And I will just quote uh, one philosopher who said that uh, if we don't take care of our diet now, medicine will be the lifestyle in future. So we have to be very cautious of what we are eating. <coughs> that is to say, you have to drink a lot of fluid water. In fact, the highest percentage of our meals should be, they should have a, some amount of water that is fluid. We need to take a lot of vegetables. We need to take minimum carbs, but we have a problem. Why? The vegetables are very expensive. Uh, so what is readily available is the carbs, the ugali, the rice, and because you want to take a large portion so that you get full, then the diet then becomes inadequate. And so by the time you're getting to 35, 40, then our immunity is so low that we cannot fight infections or diseases. Mm -hmm. Again, the other challenge that we have with food and this is something that I think uh, that need to be addressed well, the availability of food. You know, we need to grow our natural food because there is availability of, you know, Glovo. Of course, my daughter will ask for the pizza and, you know, somehow I'll have to, I'll buy it. But what am I doing after buying that pizza? What is it I'm doing after buying that pizza? Am I advising this girl that after you eat that pizza, then you need to drink a lot of water so that you detoxify your body, so that you clean out your body of the toxins? Believe you me, we don't drink water. And you even hear somebody comes to the hospital and they tell you, by the way, I don't love water. Me is kunyagi maji, na kunyaga tu glass moja. Please, please, water is the whole medicine in this life. And now uh, we have to include it in our diet. Yes. So you've mentioned water and foods that are also high mm -hmm. in the water content yes. as well. Because mm -hmm. water detoxifies our systems and our bodies. And people will argue, as I was talking about the economy, mm -hmm. investing in uh, healthy foods is expensive. Is expensive. They'll tell you buying all these vegetables, buying the healthy oils and whatnot mm -hmm. is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Also, working out and paying for gym memberships, they argue that it is expensive. Jared, tell us the value of why we need to put money into our health and the things that will benefit us internally as early as now. Uh, let me just pick a point on preventive health. <coughs> there is a program I was brought by, by Bishop Zambo. He had a, a, a lot of a workload in his counseling desk where the women were struggling with uh, sexual transmitted diseases and also a, a, a very heavy load on HIV, but uh, the funny part, they were innocent. It was the effect of our culture. Nowadays, uh, there's this command that says do not commit adultery, but uh, our culture has changed the lexical and the wording. We have gone light touch on morals. Mm. We speak about cheating and we go light and we have our vibe. Yes. So <laughs> I, I, I'm not here to, to bring a moral principle on the mm. public, mm. wherever your orientation be. But uh, I'm here to say this, that uh, if we empower the public on preventive health, mm -hmm. that's why we had to take, the, the, to take those women who are working on high-risk areas uh, through preventive care. They can take PrEPs or they can be able to be, to be immunized based on the condition or diseases that are affecting their areas. Therefore, it's more of empowerment. If we could empower this kind of People, you know, there are people, I, I can't uh, close all the clubs. There are people who are working generally in high risk areas where such encounters is the word of the day. But if we can empower them, we can prevent the counter effect of their diseases. That's why we are here to empower the public. Can we work on preventive? before we work on curative. Mm -hmm. Curative is very expensive. Before, if you knock my clinic when you're in a curative condition, I'll have to prescribe at a fee. Right, but uh, on preventive, it's more on your side. But if you can approach it, the easy, you know your husband, you know he, he's a striker, probably not from my new, as a striker, <laughs> from, yeah. But uh, are you an <laughs> Arsenal fan? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, that but, uh, was a long I'm shot. Trying to say, I'm trying to say, you, you know your husband, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you take preventive measures, Ali, mm -hmm. yeah, so that uh, there is no 
I'm I mean, driving a point to the public. It. I'm driving a point to the public. And that's that's a very yes, good yes, point because yes. yeah. it's better to prevent something exactly. yeah, than yeah. treat it. Sure, Let's sure. talk about something like cancer. Yes, yes. Cancer is uh, something that is very hard to, it's mm. almost impossible to yes. get rid of. Yes, yes. So if you can prevent it by mm. doing the assessments, mm. eating right, watching what you put into your body, then you'll go uh, far much ahead mm -hmm. than people who just disregard all that. Sure, sure. Now, Monica, mm -hmm. let's picture someone who has a good diet, they drink water, mm -hmm. they do frequent medical checks, but they may have a, a job that requires them to sit in an office, so they're not very stationary, mm -hmm. or they work from uh, home. So they're always in a position where they're seated, they're not as active, I mean. And they do not prioritize working out yes, yes. and even walking. What is the pri what is the need? Is there a need, if any, of even working out and walking? Because I've had about ten thousand steps mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. What is the essence of all these things in our health? You see, uh, uh, actually, the way we our bodies are made. If I just sit, there is that aspect of the blood uh, circulation in the body. If I just sit the whole day without moving, then there is going to be stasis, what we call the, the blood will not return. So you will be advised to not only sit, in the morning when we wake up, the first thing you do, just jog in the house. You don't need to walk out. Create a place for yourself. Do jogging. Make yourself sweat. In the evening when you're leaving work, okay, I, I leave work and I maybe just dive into the car and I drive home. <laughs> but after that, what do I do in the house? For me, before I sleep, I must do squats, I must jog, just, you know, on spot jogging, just to make sure that I'm sweating and my heart is raising. Why? Because I want to improve my circulation. If there is no circulation into the vital organs, then I'll start feeling, you know, those feelings of you're feeling tired, you're feeling, you know, fatigued, you don't want to wake up, you don't want, you know, all those challenges. So it is very, very important to create some time to do some activities physical activities, mm. regardless of whether you feel like or not. And especially after you get to the age of 40, Jared, you know, you need to move your body. Mm. Yes. And you see the way, that's, that's very well said. You have to at least do something. And when we pair it with what Jared was saying, when you start early, mm. you prevent all the issues yes. that can come mm. about when you're getting older yes. and your, your bones are tired and whatnot. So Jared, yes. Why would you advise someone to at least walk? Like the way she mm. said, most people will jump into the car, yep. drive off or call a, a, a ride to take mm. them home. Mm. Or even if they do walk, it's very short distances because now we have mm. convenience of forms of transport. Yeah. We have convenience of figuring out if we can work from home or at the office. Or even if we have classes, we can, work, we can do the classes at home. What is the essence of just walking around and taking a walk and breathing in fresh air even as part of the preventative measures? Uh, uh, let me, I, I'll just uh, throw the ball back to her because wellness is much of her specialization, but I'll build the body a little bit uh, on positive self-image. Uh, I think uh, because you're speaking about uh, jogging, you're speaking about dietary, we are having an issue with the people who are having a negative self-image on themselves. Mm -hmm. eh? uh, I've seen this procedure for enlarging breasts, this procedure for enlarging your waist. It's common and we charge very expensive. We don't <laughs> mind making money. <laughs> you can come on board. I'll do it very yes. fine. But uh, I'm trying to say, why do you go to that extent? It's because of negative self-image. Mm -hmm. And that's why we encourage them. If they can jog, they can be fit. Mm -hmm. Their self-image their vibe will be enhanced. Mm -hmm. eh? Their confidence will be built up. Eh? That's what we are telling them. Eat healthy, jog, keep fit, so that you can have a positive self-image. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for ladies, I'm sorry, uh, you, you have to, to look good and then so <laughs> forth and so forth. And it affects but, us even but, more, but, but, but even the way we walk. Yeah, I'm True. <laughs> yes, you can see, even, let's say, dermatologists will mm -hmm. tell you, most of our, of our products, maybe for, for, for you want to change your orientation in terms of color and use extreme products, mm. you see, it's negative self-image that, that pushes you that. to try to change uh, your, 
your shape, your orientation, your color. But I want to tell people if they can embrace, it's a spiritual, basically from inside outside. Self-acceptance, yes. Self they can go and accept themselves. Mm. They can work on their positive vibe, positive self-image. Mm. I love this And uh, that's campaign. also with wellness. Yes, Sorry, yes, yes. you were saying? This campaign, they said black is beauty. Mm. I, I love it. I support it because yes. uh, uh, now we are not bleaching much. Mm. And now we are <laughs> accepting. So we I accepting. just want to <laughs> take a very short break and come back on that uh, note yes, because yes. that is part of the wellness. Yes, yes. We want to talk about the overall wellness such mm. that mm. you feel confident in your yeah. body and you're okay mm. such that you do not need any other additional services yes. so let us take a very very short break but I want you to go on our social media platforms right now and write a comment if you have a question ask our professionals mm. Mm. over here and they will advise you what to do and we will come back right after this break this is power talk stay tuned to y254 TV